This program is going to take a look at the nature of the bonds that occur in metals. And for my first example, I want to consider, say, the metal potassium. You might recall that its valence configuration has a lone S1 electron at the fourth energy level. We define a metallic bond, that that exists in metals, as the attraction between a cation, which is a positively charged particle, I remember that because of the T in cation, it looks like a positive sign, and free-moving electrons, which provide our negative charge. Hence, we can describe it as an electrostatic attraction. Here, the potassium atom will toss out this one valence electron, leaving behind a positive charge. Each atom of potassium will essentially do exactly the same thing, throwing out its electron. This then results in a sea of cations, because that's what those would now be described as, and a group of freely moving electrons. So these have the ability to move in a particular direction, and hence metals are good conductors of electricity. There's a few other features of this particular arrangement. One is that when subject to stress, for instance, as we draw out a metal, we call it ductility, these can slide to the left and to the right over each other because these particular cations aren't locked in place. They're always surrounded by these negatively moving electrons. And also when we hammer it, these atoms can slide down in between the others, again, not distorting or disrupting the metallic bond, giving metals their unique properties of being both malleable and ductile. Now the nature of this metallic bond, or the strength of attraction that exists between here and here, can be altered by a few factors. Let's start by taking a look at, say, one of them. One has to do with charge. So suppose we have a different metal. Suppose calcium, for instance. It develops a 2 plus charge because each calcium would toss out two electrons. This would result in a doubling in, of the number of our delocalized electrons. It would also result in a doubling of the charge. This creates a much, much stronger force of attraction between the electrons and those cations that are present. This is evidence if we take a look at their melting points, so their boiling points. Potassium, which is able to throw out one electron, melts at 63. Calcium, right beside it, that can toss out two electrons and develop a two plus charge, melts at 800, a significant increase in the strength of the metallic bond. Another factor that affects the strength of this metallic bond is the distance between the nucleus and those electrons. Smaller atoms would be able to exert a greater pull. So for instance, sodium, which lies underneath potassium in the periodic table, and is smaller, it melts at 98. We can alter the, pro the properties of our metal by introducing another substance to our metal, and thereby changing it into something called an alloy. An alloy is a mixture of metals, and the addition of a metal alters the properties. Here are some common alloys. Steel. We begin with iron and we add bits of carbon and tungsten to it and thereby alter the properties of that iron. Another substance, bronze, in much the same manner, copper, the major material, and we add a little bit of tin. It's this example I want to look at first of all. Bronze, which is mainly copper, here representing the red atoms, if this was a sample of copper, these would be able to slide easily over each other. The introduction of a large tin atom in this lattice impedes the ability of these to slide easily over each other. And as a result, we now have a material that's much harder than the original copper. And did you know that if you joined up both Iron Man and the Silver Surfer, you would create alloys? Thanks for watching.